half century ago, two former rodeo men went into the woods with a 16 millimeter camera and stumbled on Bigfoot. When she's walking across a sandbar and spreads her arms out and looks at the camera, frame 352, that's become the Bigfoot icon for our culture. The sighting of Patty, as she would later be known, at Bluff Creek in California is one of the most famous reels in film history. Before the Patterson-Gimlin film, named after its makers, the Sasquatch was a local Northwest legend. After, Bigfoot became an international celebrity. But look at this clip from the 2017 movie War for the Planet of the Apes. I mean, it's obvious now with the leaps in film and costume technology that this is just someone in an ape suit, right? A guy even passed a lie detector test on national TV, claiming he wore the suit. About whether you were the Bigfoot shown in the 1967 Patterson film. Yes. But the film continues to fascinate people. How confident are you this film's real? At this point, I'm, I'm as confident as I can be short of having stood on the sandbar with Roger and Bob and, and witnessed it myself. That's Jeff Meldrum, a professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State. He's known for being one of the few academics to openly study Sasquatch. For Bigfooters around the world, the Patterson-Gimlin film is not only real, it's one of the strongest pieces of evidence of the existence of an undiscovered giant walking ape on the planet. Still, 50 years later, the film is yet to be officially debunked. So how is this not a person wearing an ape suit? It's all so easy to say, oh, that's obviously a man in a fursuit, until you see it up against a man in a fursuit. He points to the Planet of the Apes franchise that came out around the same time as the film and won an Oscar for the makeup. He specifically calls up a scene in the sauna in the 1970 sequel, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. (laughs) They look like big, hairy Pillsbury Doughboy. Jeff Meldrum compares it to the Patterson-Gimlin film, which he shows to his anatomy students. I'm also including some stabilized footage from a Reddit user that helps illustrate Jeff's point. And say, all right, I want you to point out as many landmarks of surface anatomy and muscle masses that you can identify. And they start at the head, and they can see the trapezius, they can see the deltoid, they can see the lateral and long heads of the triceps. You can see the erector spinae down the back. You can see the shoulder blades moving under the skin. I mean, you just go on and on from top to bottom. You, you can pick out all these features, none of which ever show up in a, in a, in a cheap off-the-shelf costume. Costume manufacturer Philip Morris claimed just that in this video. He gave talks about how he sold Patterson, the suit worn in the film. So as he's walking, he turns his way. But the most relevant proof of Bigfoot's existence for some serious researchers isn't easily captured on film. It's what the Sasquatch leaves behind. Cliff Berrickman has one of the largest collections of Sasquatch footprints in the world. You might recognize Cliff as the co-host of Animal Planet's Finding Bigfoot. He's seen a lot of fake prints, but says the Patterson-Gimlin ones aren't so easily dismissed. The trailing leg of the creature also shows the flexibility in the mid part of the foot. There are a few frames there where we see Patty take her heel off the ground, but yet keep the entire forefoot in touch with the ground. Along with the footage of Patty was a clear track of footprints. One of them showed a very distinctive pressure ridge a push-off that comes about as a result of the very flexible midfoot. This distinct characteristic is a smoking gun for Jeff. He's seen that pressure ridge in foot samples across decades and continents. But both Jeff and Cliff admit that until there's a body, then the film and all the research will be up for debate. If it's a guy in a suit, the Patterson-Gimlin film is one of the great hoaxes of all time. If it's not, the film would completely upend everything we understand about apes and evolution. Either way, the Patterson-Gimlin film turned a Northwest local legend into a global icon. And it's endured because it reminds us there are some things in the world we can never know for sure. Hey, I'm John. I made the video. Uh, If you want to see more like it, go to opb.org slash video or like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching.